I've thought long and hard about how I wanted to tell this story because these stories are difficult to recount. Nonetheless, they are important. And in a time where censorship and revisionist history is at an all-time high in America and around the world, I felt inspired to make this drive out to Maryland's Eastern Shore during Black History Month to walk in the footsteps of history for myself, to retrace the steps of one of the world's most bravest freedom fighters, a woman who escaped the perils of slavery and led countless others to freedom during perilous times. Welcome to the Underground Railroad. Araminta Ross, Minty for short, was born into slavery in March of 1822. Forced to work at the young age of six, she'd later marry a free slave and take his last name, Tubman. At the age of 27, she learned that she might be sold and made to move south, and as a result, she would escape alone, making it all the way to the free state of Pennsylvania. But her story doesn't start there. It would start right here in the marshlands of Dorchester County, Maryland, land where she knew how to navigate very well. She'd leave and return dozens of times to rescue family members and friends. Minty Tudman would take on the name of her mother after she'd married, Harriet, Harriet Tubman. The Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad Byway is a self-guided driving tour that includes more than 30 sites woven into Harriet's story and the story of the Underground Railroad. The walk to freedom from here is roughly 200 miles to the city of Philadelphia. I'll be driving a portion of it located here in Maryland, but I cannot imagine the risk in trekking it dozens of times as Harriet and others did on foot and carriage. Not far from her childhood home still stands one of the most influential places in Harriet's young life. This is Bucktown General Store. This place is told to be the scene of her first act of defiance. Hired out by her slave master to a nearby farmer, Harriet was sent to purchase some goods at this store. At the same time, another enslaved young boy belonging to another enslaver left his work without permission. When the enslaver's overseer caught up with the young boy in the store and ordered Tubman to help tie him up, Tubman refused. The enslaved boy ended up breaking free from the overseer, attempting to run. The overseer would then grab a two-pound iron weight on the counter and hurl it at the boy, but instead struck Tubman in the head. The blow would crack her skull. In stories told by Harriet later in life, she recounted how she was given no medical attention, nor a bed or place to lie down. She was only given a few days to recover before being forced back into the fields to work. One of the stops on the byway is Harriet Tubman's Underground Railroad Visitor Center. It features exhibits about Tubman's childhood and young adult life living in and around this area. The center is open from 10 to 4, Tuesday through Sunday. It's free admission, but donations are welcome. Back in 2016, the government floated the idea of placing Harriet on the $20 bill, replacing President Andrew Jackson, a slaveholder who expelled thousands of Native Americans from their land. But it will likely be many years before we get to see Harriet on a 20, likely by 2030. Tumman, however, is featured on an uncirculated commemorative coin set to be released in March of this year by the Mint in honor of Black History Month and to celebrate her life. Many of Tubman's descendants and descendants of other enslaved people still live in communities of Dorchester County. To pay respects to her story, as you'll notice when you drive around the city, members of the community have contributed to building memorials and murals dedicated to Harriet. This place is called the Long Wharf, and for many, it was the beginning to an end of a long journey after being kidnapped and brought all the way from Africa and sold on the banks of this waterfront until the slave trade was banned in 1808. Thousands of slaves were also shipped off into the deep south from these very docks, never to see their families again. 
Just a few short blocks from the Long Wharf lies the Dorchester County Courthouse. The original courthouse burned in 1852. Nonetheless, this was a scene of many slavery auctions, including that of Tubman's niece and her two children. The story goes on that day of the auction, the niece's husband, who was a freed slave, outbid everyone. But when the official came to collect payment, the family had already fled, transporting them on a boat to Philadelphia to meet up with Harriet. This was also the site where a free black farmer was controversially sentenced to 10 years in prison for owning a copy of the abolitionist novel, Uncle Tom's Cabin. Imagine 10 years of your life locked up for owning a book about freedom. Before the Civil War, it was a crime to teach an enslaved person how to read. There were very few opportunities for Black people to learn. This building, now called the Stanley Institute, is an early example of what a school would have looked like post-Civil War. It is a one-room school established by the newly freed Black community just after the Civil War. James Webb was a free African-American farmer who had built this home in 1852. He lived here with his wife, who was enslaved, and their four children. It's hard to imagine that one person could be free and your spouse could be enslaved, and that person would have to leave to do their enslaved master's work as if it were a fucking nine-to-five job. And if I'm not mistaken, if an owner owned a female slave, her children would be born slaves as they carry the inheritance of their mother. Anyway... This is what a typical house of an African-American family would look like during those times. It's rare that this cabin still exists today. It also represents the kind of housing that a poor white family would live in. The home is now owned and maintained by a historical society. It has one room with a potato hole and an open fireplace and a loft that can be accessed with a ladder. You know, I have to admit, all day today I've been driving around the eastern part of Maryland through these vast farm country lands and times on miles and miles of road by myself in my car in the middle of the day. And yet I still feel anxiety, a, uh, a little bit scared, to be honest. One, I don't want to get lost in an area that I'm not familiar with. And secondly, I don't know, in my mind, I was just kind of like retracing the steps of Harriet Tubman and what she must have been feeling during that time when she planned her escape and then came back dozens times more to help other enslaved people make it to the North to secure their freedom. It's just, it blows my mind. I don't think that I would have ever been brave enough to even do that journey alone once in a lifetime, let alone 13 times. So it's just a testament to what an incredible woman she is. James Webb's cabin just behind me, from my knowledge, was a safe house built by free black slaves. And it was a safe house for people also traveling on that room. And it still means standing today, which is incredible and just like a stark reminder of, of our history and our past and how it's important to learn that history and not be ignorant to it. As the sun dips below the horizon, casting long shadows across the dense forest, a small group of weary but determined figures emerges from the underbush. Their faces are etched with exhaustion, but there is glimmer of hope in their eyes. Among them is Harriet Tubman, their fearless leader, who has guided them through countless dangers and obstacles on their journey to freedom. As they pause for a moment to catch their breath, Harriet gathers them close, her voice barely above a whisper, filled with conviction. My dear friends, she begins, her words carrying the weight of their shared struggle. We have come so far, but our journey is far from over. We have faced unimaginable risk and dangers, but we have persevered. And though our bodies may be weary, our spirits remain unbroken. Wow. 
can't believe I'm here. I think that's that house over there was her house. Team Harriet. It's so surreal to be walking on the same grounds that she used to walk on over a hundred years ago. I don't know. It's hard to find the words to express how I feel right now, but feeling very grateful to her for sure. She gestures towards the vast expanse of wilderness stretching out before them, a land of uncertainty, but also a promise. We stand on the threshold of a new life, a life where we are no longer shackled by the chains of bondage. But we must never forget the price that was paid for our freedom. We must never forget those who came before us, who courage and sacrifice paved the way for our escape. Harriet's voice grows stronger, filled with an urgency born of experience. Their stories must be told, for they are the threads that bind us together as people. They are the reminder of the strength and resilience that lies within each and every one of us. And they serve as a warning to future generations that the fight for freedom is never truly won. She looks out at her companions, their faces illuminated by the fading light, what we have endured, what we have overcome, must never be forgotten. For what is not learned from the past is doomed to be repeated. So let us carry these stories with us. Let us pass them down to our children and our children's children so that they may never forget the price of freedom. Such a beautiful place, so peaceful. That was actually a lot... Uh, much harder than I was anticipating. I don't know, you just... I'm glad that I came. Given the many, many miles that Harriet had to walk to secure her freedom and the freedom of <laughs> hundreds of others enslaved people, it's definitely worth making the trip out here at least once in your lifetime to visit such a... and to learn more about the history of this very brave and she's she's a heroine through and through and as I was standing there just like looking at her grave and I was just thinking about the future and the present and all the things going on in the world and how you know in my view things are starting to regress in terms of people treating each other like human beings and having compassion and you know, just allowing people the space to just be free to be who they are. And I and I just see it like kind of taking a step in the wrong direction. And I just don't, I know she probably wouldn't feel this way, but I certainly wouldn't want everything that she has done and accomplished in her life and what she gave to humanity to be in vain, you know to be a lost cause because there are a few people who feel like equality feels like oppression to them. Anyway, I was just weeping <laughs> like a baby. Um, luckily no one's around to see me, but it's very touching. And I just thanked her, you know, I just thanked her because, because of her, our people are free today. We were always free. We're no longer enslaved. 
And I just thanked her for her bravery and hope that I could draw on some of that myself in my own personal life with battles that I face. And of course, um, cancers that we faced within humanity today. And with that, Harriet Tubman leads her fellow escapees into the gathering darkness, their footsteps echoing through the forest as they continue their journey towards a future where freedom is not just a dream, but a reality worth fighting for.